This Hong Kong LGBT climate study is, is critical and significant for Hong Kong. This research is also groundbreaking for Hong Kong because I believe it is the first piece of research that so clearly defines the business case for employers to, to look at this. So there are a number of very interesting findings from this survey. We found that um, discrimination is still happening in Hong Kong. About 80% of um, Hong Kong's working population say that discrimination um, against LGBT individuals is taking uh, place. We do see that um, there is also evidence that a non-inclusive environment in the workplace having negative impact on not only personally the LGBT employees but also for the business because productivity, employee well-being and employee engagement is negatively affected. On a positive side, we do see that a lot of people in Hong Kong think that more needs to be done um, to make Hong Kong a more inclusive workplace. About 85% say that Hong Kong needs to be more inclusive and engage more on this subject. And um, a lot of people say that the government needs to take the lead, but companies have a very big role to play as well, because 80% um, say that um, Hong Kong's companies need to be proactive and um, take steps to um, make sure that LGBT employees are treated equally in the workplace. Well, I find, I find this survey very important because we have the data to understand the situation of LGBT individuals in companies. 35% of people would actually accept, uh, would actually accept that uh, an LGBT employee be denied a, a job you know, from a company. And that actually points to the fact that Hong Kong employers need to be aware of the uh, discrimination suffered by LGBT individuals. And I think it's important that companies take on measures to ensure that their hiring policy, their HR policies are conducive to an inclusive environment. In the general working population survey, 57% of the respondents says that they don't know anyone who is an LGBT individual. And then in the LGBT survey, a significant majority of the respondents says that they are not out to their families and they're not out to the workplace. Yeah. As a lesbian, I've been told so many times that it's okay for me to be lesbian, but don't talk about it. Don't rock the boat. You know, and, and the expectation is very clear, you know, that I should be silent. And this kind of attitude permeates itself in the workplace as well. Many friends of mine have said that they hear anti-gay jokes spoken right in front of them, sometimes even by senior management of their companies, but they're afraid to speak up because they didn't want to be seen as the troublemaker. Yeah. You know, discrimination doesn't need to be blatant or violent for them to be harmful. This kind of dis insidious discrimination it could create a very intimidating workplace and also just as hurtful to the individual. I, I think the significance of this survey is that it reveals how very little is known about transgender people. 77% of the respondents in that working population survey said that they didn't know what transgender was. But in, in as far as they did have an idea, uh, um, they, the idea was a fairly non-inclusive one. 50% uh, of people in the, in the um, working population survey uh, were either ambivalent or, or downright unaccepting of transgender individuals. Uh, it's sad that LGB individuals feel that they have to hide their sexual orientation in the workplace. But it's downright tragic that transgender people find it impossible to do so even if they want to. Some of them may look a little bit different. A little, a little bit different to the stereotype that one has of a man or a woman. Even if they pass perfectly, their ID card will likely uh, um, uh, out them. And so to find that trans people are in that sort of situation and they are less accepted in Hong Kong is, is I think, a really important finding in this study. The most important thing any individual employee can do to promote workplace equality is to be visible, whether they're gay or straight, because we know the most effective way to erase prejudice is when people know someone from that group. If they're a straight ally, the most important thing is they can be visible too. They can put a sticker on their uh, cubicle, they can change the language they use, they can talk about gay friends or family that they have. But being visible is probably the single most important thing an employee can do, regardless of their own sexual orientation. One of the things we think about at Barclays in the LGBT group is 
creating change within our workplace. We have to compete for the same employees out of the best schools in America, and we want them to know that Barclays is a place where they can come and be themselves and be recognized. Uh, and that was just one of the key launching points for us. And it actually has to start with employers and adopting a non-discrimination policy. In, on Wall Street, most of the Wall Street firms do have domestic partnership benefits, but there's discrimination in the United States that if you have benefits for your husband or wife, legally married husband or wife, and recognized by the federal government where gay, even gay marriages are not, their benefits for their, for their spouses are not taxable. For LGBT people, they are taxable. So Barclays took a leadership stance and decided to offset that tax consequence by grossing up people's income. So we were the first among the financial industry to do that. And rather than being the only one that leads the industry, we tried to be the one that creates a domino effect. So if we adopt a policy, all the other places can follow suit. So there is very clearly in this research a call for us as a Hong Kong community to come together and look at the issues that come from this research. I think attitudes towards Hong Kong LGBT are changing in a positive way, but at the same time we are also seeing an increase of backlash I think, against that kind of changing attitude. So the more visible and the more positive the LGBT communities are being, the more backlash we see. There is also a need to educate to understand why LGBT issues are important and that as Hong Kong becomes uh, Asia's you know, capitalist and global city, it is also the responsibility of the government to promote the values of uh, LGBT individuals and what diversity stands for as a world city. So what I'm very hopeful today is that you know, with uh, Barclay sponsoring the study, climate study and with community business you know, doing this event, and I thought it was a great opportunity for, for us you know, building a foundation to start creating a dialogue to speak with the government, to the companies in Hong Kong, and you know, call for action to create a inclusive and diversified workplace. Because after all, it's just not going to ben benefit only the LGBT employees. It's going to benefit all of us as individuals, as employees, as children of families and citizens of Hong Kong. So I would like to call on companies to. Um, take on action to provide an inclusive workplace for LGBT individuals. It must be a strong, really strong message to the government that um, sexual orientation uh, discrimination legislation is a must. Yeah. Well, we should really be uh, going for legislation, anti-discrimination legislation to protect the rights of the LGBT uh, community. It will really deter you know, the ugly uh, acts of some discriminators. Second, even bigger benefit is in legislating the process of it. It's a good education process for the community. It also brings a much higher awareness of the ordinary people uh, towards the LGBTs. What we really need now is more focused research on the circumstances in which trans people live in Hong Kong, their needs, needs in terms of opportunities to live their lives with respect, equality and dignity, the very things that their lives lack at the moment in Hong Kong.